All right, welcome back to Story Time in the Bakery. We are at episode 10 today. I'm really glad that you guys are loving this so much. I'm really loving reading all of your comments. So um, yeah, be sure to comment below because I really do love the conversation and your reactions to hearing all of my Story Time Journey series. So it's funny because if you catch up with my Facebook page or saw the little post I made here on my community page on YouTube, many of you know that I got married on Monday. So it's kind of funny because like we're up to the point in my story time where, you know, it's gotten into like a lot of the personal relationship stuff that I'm talking about. And all I kept saying is, I just really want a husband. So even though like the story that I'm at right now is around 2015, 16, and now it's like almost 10 years later, I finally got my husband. So we'll eventually get up to speed with the current events that are my life. But right now I've got to pick it up with episode 10 where I'd just recently sold the bakery to pursue my online career on YouTube, teaching traditional classical baking. And as that all fell apart and the sale of the bakery turned into a literal nightmare, I decided to skedaddle on out of New Jersey and leave the Woodland Bakery, its name, and everything associated with it behind and move to Florida to start over. So if you have not been listening to the episodes before this one, you have a bit of catching up to do to understand how I got to this point. And while I ended the last one with that whole nightmare story, I do want to add in here that the girl I sold the bakery to, she actually contacted me and I think it was like early 2018 or late 2017. I'm not sure, but it was after she had watched one of my earlier vlogs that I was doing where I wouldn't even speak the name of the bakery. And there was just clear discomfort for me around the topic of the bakery in those videos. And apparently she'd been watching those vlogs and it struck a nerve with her. And she just felt really terrible that all those years that I spent in the bakery building it to the point to the point that she bought it from me that I couldn't even utter the name of the very bakery that I'd owned. And the fact that she had something to do with that, well, I guess she just felt really bad. So we ended up meeting up for dinner one night and when she saw me, she cried and cried and we hugged and she apologized for all of her craziness. Yes, she definitely owned the craziness that ensued. And she explained her overwhelm and her fear and her anger that she felt shortly after she took over the bakery. So the suspicions that I had that I mentioned in the last episode, they actually were correct. And she validated that that was the truth of what was happening. I'll tell you what, fear is a real m and man. It is the most destructive emotion. After all, it is the complete opposite of love. You know, when most people are asked what is the opposite of love, they automatically say it's hate, but it's not. It's fear. And it is the lowest vibration energetically that we could ever feel. And it's the most destructive since it spins off into all the other negative emotions. So as we talked through dinner, she asked me, when will it get better? Meaning, when will it be easier to own the bakery? And I said, the day you sell it. At that time, she had only been there like two short years and she was already looking to get out, but she had a five-year lease. So anyway, she did apologize profusely and you know, I always do try to see the other person's perspective and work through why they do what they do. I mean, I love psychological analysis. And, you know, it does take a really big person to see their own BS and then to own it and work through it. So kudos to her for all of that introspection. I suppose I was meant for her to live that experience out. And if that was my role here for her, then great. I'm glad I could help. Even though I had always gone away from that experience going, man, what the hell did I do to deserve all that? So anyway, getting back to where I left off, I had just moved to Florida. It's mid-2015. 
the relationship with man child fell apart my Gretchen's bakery website fell apart and I explained all about that in the last one but this ultimate falling apart of my website by a third party is what ultimately triggered my decision to finally transfer my website and YouTube channel to vegan after a very long time of conflict inside of me for just not living true to myself. I had already made the switch in my personal life to vegan and now my business was not in alignment with that, so just imagine how hard that is. If anyone has ever tried to be someone or something that they're not for the benefit of others or for a job or for money, it's just really oppressive and it doesn't feel good. So in the last one, I talked about how the switch to vegan baking actually terrified me because I knew nothing about how to bake without eggs and actually all the animal ingredients that we've been taught to use as normal. So the thought of it was just very daunting. As a matter of fact, a few years earlier, I had dabbled in experimenting with vegan baking, but with disastrous results. And, you know, at the time in 2016, there were very few vegan bake books out there. And the ones that did, they were just all about tofu, like tofu chocolate cake this and tofu chocolate mousse that and just, ugh, that is not the kind of cake I want to be making. So I just sort of left it alone and thought, yeah, if I ever switch to vegan baking, I'll I'll never bake again. Say goodbye to my life's passion and career choice. Now what am I going to do? But you know, when I came back around to it this time in 2016, something had shifted. I guess I was now ready for it, as they say, when the student is ready, the teacher shall appear, because now everything I was testing came out really great. Okay, not really great, but way better than the first go around, and there was no tofu in sight. All right, that's a lie. My first vegan vanilla cake recipe was made with tofu, and I remember making it for my 100,000 subscriber celebration on YouTube, and I guess at the time, it was good. Like, of course, I probably ate the whole thing, but like looking back on it now, I have progressed so much in regards to vegan baking that that thing was atrocious. But hey, we all have to start at the beginning and it wasn't long before I was converting so many of my recipes to vegan with more than fantastic results. Now, all of this was happening just as I was packing up once again to move back to New Jersey. Remember, in the very early episode where I talked about my spirit tarot card, the one that speaks to me so much, the fool card, despite all the knockdowns, I always get back to the place where I'm excited to start the next chapter, hopeful for what's next, imagining, like literally daydreaming the success of everything that I want so much. It's always that fool looking up to the sky, smiling as he steps off the cliff into the abyss. And this is going to be important when I get up to speed to my life today and how I somehow manifested my absolute dream life that I am living at this very moment. So for those who are like, you know, so distraught with all of the challenges and chaos that's been my life up until now, don't worry, there is a happy ending. But not before one more test, the test of all tests that nearly put me in the grave. So as I head back to New Jersey with all this hope and dreams of this is it, this is finally going to be my year, it wasn't even a week before I walked right into the next trap. And I say trap, which implies that once again, I'm a victim, but girl and boys, if you have ever dealt with a narcissist and got out alive, you know it is a tangled web of chaos that takes the strength of a thousand wild horses to get out of it. But again, as always, I have to take ownership for getting myself into this situation since it was everything I thought I wanted. And once again, I do recognize my need and my hell-bent mission to always get what I want at any cost. And these are some key words right here, at any cost. So here I am back in New Jersey, diving headfirst into what I thought was finally the one. 
and some wise words, and I can't remember who said it. It was probably my friend Pat, who has been with me by my side for the last 25 years, gently nudging me through all the fires I love to walk through, but it goes something like this. You'll never meet the one at 2 a.m. in a bar. Amen to that, but I was love bombed that night like I've never been love bombed before, and it was just what I needed after that interesting five-year relationship with the man-child. Now, I do have a tendency, if you haven't noticed by now, to make meaning out of everything, and I love to credit the universe for handing me everything I want, even though most times it's a twisted and tweaking by me to actually make it fit and look like what I want. You know, kind of like buying the bakery in the dark, seeing the red flags, painting them pink and throwing sprinkles and unicorn farts all over them. So that's the same with this relationship. Seeing the dysfunction almost immediately, but brushing it aside and insisting that it's perfect and everything I've ever wanted. After all, and not to make excuses, but this is a big excuse, I'm now 42 and dang, I want a husband already. So I guess it was a combination that he was this smooth talker and I was so in need of what I wanted that I put on some hefty blinders at that point. But for now, I'm in my next apartment rental and it actually was like nearly an hour away from where he lived. And, um, you know, I also had my website and YouTube channel to rebuild as Gretchen's Vegan Bakery. I was still flying high, I was still feeling good, like everything was really looking up. So in the very beginning, it all seemed like it was shaping up to be everything I've ever wanted, the happy housewife. And, you know, I'm not ashamed to say that. I'm all about traditional gender roles. I have always wanted that since I was very young. I'll never forget when I was, I think a freshman, I just got into high school and my mom said, we have to talk about what you're going to do after high school. Like, what do you want to be? And I said, I want to be like Aunt Carol. So my Aunt Carol, my mother's sister, was a stay-at-home mom and a housewife and I just wanted to be just like her. So my mom basically went nuts and told me absolutely not. I was never to rely on a man and I needed to always be able to take care of myself and get a career and blah, blah, blah. So, okay, there's a lot to unpack there. But first of all, in that very moment, I basically snuffed out my dreams of being what I wanted to be, even if it was just a housewife in quotations. And then I exchanged it all for working. I had already been working as a waitress at a diner since I was 14, and pretty much immediately after that conversation with my mom, I increased my hours to work not just Sundays, but Saturdays too, and then through the summer, I basically worked every day. This continued through my entire high school years as I further ingrained into my brain that I had to always survive and take care of myself and only myself and this would be achieved through nothing more than work. I can't rely on a man after all, right? That's what my mom taught me. Now, I will say on some level this is good advice from my mom. I mean, like in a way, but it was delivered in a way that at the time seemed threatening and urgent. You know, like back then, I didn't see that these were her beliefs and her fears coming through to the degree that I then gave up everything I wanted for me based on her beliefs and fears about life and men in general. So although by the time I was 16, I did have a really good high school boyfriend, one that I stayed with actually till I was 21. Everyone thought we'd be married and interestingly, he was a really great guy. He would have been the perfect one to actually give me all of those dreams of happy housewife because he was just that guy. Now, don't get me wrong, I don't have regrets. Like I know that everything I went through after that was meant for me and what I have now, I mean, it's everything I've ever wanted and more and we'll get to that very soon. But as you can see early on, 
you know, I'm 14, 15, 16 years old, the universe was actually serving me up what I truly wanted before my life was clouded with other people's belief systems from their own trauma and negative experiences. And then my own believing the lies about myself and developing really low self-esteem through, you know, just living those lies. And also don't forget the people pleasing. So, okay, that's a little backstory, but back to late 2016, early 2017, my vegan baking experiments are going great. It was at this time that I got the cookbook deal. And if you've not listened to that episode, it's actually not a part of this story time series. I sort of kept that one separate and I've since made it private, but I'm going to leave the link to that one below in the description box for those who haven't heard my nightmare of a cookbook story. So all of this stuff is happening at the same time and it all seems really great. Like this new relationship is everything I'd ever wanted. And naturally, cause that's how narcissists do. They basically mirror you and feed you back everything that you are. So. I was literally falling in love with myself. I mean, this guy immediately went vegan when he met me. He wanted to do everything that I wanted to do, like hiking and cooking together. And he was perfectly fine with me not getting a real job and, you know, continuing to do my YouTube channel and basically doing Happy Housewife. Like, even though I was living in my own apartment, at the time, he baited me early on with asking me if I was going to marry him. Like, not actually asking me to marry him, but actually asking me if I would marry him. There's a big difference there. You know, later on, learning that he had never any intentions of ever marrying me. I'm pretty sure this is what they call future faking. And I remember one time early on after we went for a really big hike up a mountain in uh, Sourland, New Jersey. Um, he was struggling with it, but trying to keep it under wraps like it was no problem. And what can I call him without using his real name for this story? All right, how about Doodoo Head? So later on after the hike, his mom said, what? Doodoo Head went for a hike? That don't sound like him. So that was like a subtle red flag that I didn't pick up on. I mean, I thought he loved hiking and exercising. I mean, that's what he told me. I was like, dang, his own mother doesn't even know him that well. He loves this stuff. But nope, this was all the front, literally mirroring everything that I was and what I wanted to do just in order to get me hooked. And I was hooked. I was so hooked. I have never been so hooked. Don't forget, I'm falling in love with a mirror image of myself. So as this relationship is unfolding and so is my new vegan YouTube channel. Now I did lose a ton of people because of that terrible V word. And honestly, I was never mad about it. Like I totally get it. Uh, actually, it's the same thing happened to me. I had been following vegetable police since around 2018 and he was one of my favorite channels to watch. He's so funny. And he um, flipped to carnivore diet a couple years ago. And that obviously didn't interest me at all. So I left his channel. Like I didn't leave with hate comments. Like, how dare you? I was like, okay, this isn't for me anymore. Adios. Of course, most of you know, especially if you listen to the first two minutes of my opener in the last video, this was not exactly the case for me from several of my longtime viewers, but Anywho, I was now in alignment with my truth. My soul felt calm and connected through now walking the actual walk of the talk I'd been talking for so long. I finally got off the fence and it felt great. And I actually got really healthy too. I will say it again, giving up dairy, if that's the least you can do right now, it is going to do wonders for your health. So I was not only learning vegan baking, but I was also learning some incredible vegan cooking recipes and life was just great until it wasn't. It wasn't long before Doodoo -doo Head turned into Mr. Hyde after I'd say probably not even the second month of the relationship. And again, not to belabor the narcissist dogma, but the love bombing stage is so intense that once the script flips, it's very traumatic, especially for a diehard people pleaser like me and a codependent, which is always the dynamic of a narc relationship. 
So needless to say, my attention now shifted from my flying on high self-care and developing and building my recipes and website, but instead to understanding what I did wrong to cause this major shift in attitude towards me, like basically ghosted, given the silent treatment for no apparent reason. But of course it had to be me, right? I mean, what else would it be? So remember back in the last episode, I talked about how I finally got to the place after the last breakup where I just felt great about me and I got my self-worth back and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, that was a lot of blah, 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 because somebody who truly loves themselves would have hit the high road with someone acting crazy like this. But instead, my old habits and instincts kicked in and I was in full on fix it mode. You know, looking back on it, this whole time, this whole desperate time for me, reminded me of when I was three years old and my dad was moving out of the house. My parents were getting divorced and he and a friend were like moving out his belongings together. And I was coloring a picture furiously to get it done before he moved out the last of his belongings because I thought if I could just give this to him, he wouldn't leave. Ugh, that gives me chills, what a memory. But here I am again at what, 43 years old now, coloring that proverbial picture for now this new him as a peace offering so he won't leave? I guess my mom was right. They'll always leave and you can't rely on any of them. I think I mentioned it in one of my episodes along the way that my attention always seemed to get focused on the guy so that the most of the other things in my life suffered, like my own health and well-being, my businesses, my family relationships, and my friendships, and here we go again, hyper-focused on keeping this guy. And there it is, the at any cost comes at it again. So although I kind of glazed over the Jekyll and Hyde stuff, nasty head games, the fights out of nowhere about nothing that went on for hours, the unbelievable energy suck that it was just to have a conversation with him. You know, but if I told anyone what was really happening, I would literally be labeled as crazy because the narc has a way of winning over everyone they come in contact with to the point that they are described as Oh my God, what a great guy. He's so nice and funny. The life of the party. Well, just wait for when the party's over. It is not a fun place to be. But if there's one thing I'm not, it's a quitter and I'm really good at keeping up appearances. I actually think most people in narcissistic relationships are good at that because we are slowly being made to feel crazy. And for a really long time, I could not even see that I wasn't actually crazy. Like I thought I was really going crazy. But eventually I started to realize this ain't right. And by the summer of 2018, I was done with this craziness. So I decided I was going to leave and get my own place. It was right after Winklebean died, my cat of 19 years. Oh, I could still cry this minute thinking about that cat. He was with me through every breakdown and breakup for nearly two decades. And by now, you know, I have a track record of this. So his little body gave out eventually and it was just like, I was, I spiraled into major depression and I ended up taking a trip to go visit my mom in Florida for a week to regroup. And when I got back, I packed up Sophie, my other cat of 19 years old, and we moved to Easton, Pennsylvania. I think I thought if I go far enough away from him, because like I know deep down I didn't want to leave, but I knew I still had like to save myself. Like I knew this wasn't right. And although everything in me wanted to stay, I still had the wherewithal, I guess, to, um, you know, get out of this dysfunctional relationship. And I think I thought if I went far enough away from him, I wouldn't easily be able to just go back all the time. I don't know. It's kind of like when you're familiar with this type of dysfunction and negative affirmations and playing to behaviors for acceptance and love your whole life, it just feels really comfortable. And this statement's gonna be important later, so remember that I said that. 
But after just a couple of months in this new place in Easton, he eventually reeled me back in with text messages like, why aren't you here with me? We should get married, you know, more breadcrumbs. And I'll tell you what, I was like a starving rat by then and I ate every last crumb right up all the way back to his house. But in the meantime, I was keeping up appearances pretty good, going through the motions of what I thought I should be doing, you know, like continuing to build my website and YouTube channel. And it was around this time that Jason and I reconciled. I mentioned that in the last episode. And um, we decided to have another go at the Woodland Bakery blog dream team. Only this time it's Gretchen's Vegan Bakery. I don't know if any of you remember that little jump start that didn't last very long. We thought the concept would be really fun where there's this non-vegan who is Jason sort of learning through and tasting vegan baking, giving his honest feedback while I try to educate people through teaching vegan baking. And, um, you know, we did it in that same raw live style that we did in the past that everybody loved. So we had really high hopes to recreate that success that we had back in 2012 or 13. Oh my God, you gotta get in the thing with me. All right, so the moment of truth, we have made the luscious double chocolate cheesecake, my recipe that I know is just gonna be amazing. And now we are going to taste the Daya cheesecake that I bought. I, I, that would make me not go vegan, just that. <laughs> just to buy a $9 little one. This is With like a, on it. Yeah, this is like a one-serving cheesecake. So we're going to taste it, test it up against mine, and see what we like better. Maybe this one's better. But as they say, that ship had sailed, and this endeavor proved to just be too much. It was just too far away from him now to drive, plus the workload of filming. It, so it never went farther than two episodes. But you know what, that was okay because I was on my way back to Crazy Balls. After all, I'm getting the guy with the house and the garden and it was right around this time that I then adopted Ted and had a couple of kitty cats running around in the yard and my YouTube channel was hanging on by a thread, but who cares, let's play Happy Housewife, Wee. <laughs> you know, they say if you go back to the narc after leaving, your life will become a living hell. Believe it, that is the truth. At first though, it was pure bliss. I thought, wow, this is what we needed. Time apart to see how much we truly love each other. Doesn't that sound familiar? And man, has he changed. He is so amazing and loving and hmm, kind of like he was when I first met him. So it's worth adding that while I was in Easton, I was rear-ended sitting at a traffic light by a lady that didn't stop. She totaled my car and because it wasn't paid off, I lost the last thing that I sort of semi-owned. Many of you contributed to my GoFundMe at that time and you helped me so I could afford to get another car, but I never had to use that money at the time because he ended up letting me drive his little beater car instead, saying, why would you spend your money to go get a car? Just use mine, which on the surface with a normal person would be like, wow, thank you. That is so amazing that you want to help me so much. But underneath that was actually, now you can never leave again. So I thought to end it here, but there really isn't too much left to this part of the story. It was really just more of the same that I had been through before I left, just more intense and more frequent. The love bombing stage ended as it always does and gets replaced with silent treatments and literally you could just never do anything right. But the difference was when it happened the second time, I knew what I was dealing with and I also got real honest with myself. This was now like a game or a battle of the wills. And I removed myself from any idea that this was a love relationship because at this point it was just more like a transactional one. Yeah, I got my happy housewife scenario, but it sort of morphed into more of a maid and a cook, which honestly was fine by me because I had my little garden, my kitty cats running around. I was so far under the radar as far as like being in the system of car insurance and car payments and bills that I felt just really safe in that aspect. 
And I barely saw him anyway because he worked the midnight shift and I'd gotten into the habit of being asleep by the time that he got home anyway. So other than the weekends where I had to be at his full attention, the other five days were actually manageable. But you know, it's funny when I look back that I was actually willing to accept this as my life when this was so far from the life that I'd always wanted, you know, but it's interesting the things that, you know, we might do just to get what we want. And a lot of times just out of fear and safety. So we just sort of fell into this like robotic sort of, I can't explain it other, any other way than it just seems sort of like a business transaction. I'll do this, you do that. On the weekends, we pretend we like each other and that's the way it's going to go. And I guess we were just sort of both okay with that. But um, I don't know. Once he retired in the summer of 2020 and we eventually moved to Florida in October of 2020, that's when things got really intense. Um, the attention that he was getting from his workmates and especially female workmates was now gone. So that meant more was required out of me. And if anyone's ever dealt with a narc, you know that they have to be the center of attention constantly. It's the only way they get their energy by sucking it out of everyone else because they're incapable of making anything for themselves. But by now, remember, I already know who he is. I'm fine with this business type transactional relationship. I know that I don't love him. I know he doesn't love me. We're just sort of doing this thing together, both getting out of it what we wanted and needed. And instead of tripping over myself to make everything right by him, I was just sort of tolerating him and not investing any real emotion into any of the fights or the crazy making because I finally knew what I was dealing with. Besides, I kind of hated him by now anyway, so it was just a total yawn fest with all of those shenanigans by now. But if you also know anything about a narc, the more you expose them and don't play into their crazy making, the more intense they're going to turn up the heat. And, you know, I just think that <clears throat> I can deal with anything. Like, I'm strong, and if this is really what I'm going to settle for, then I'll settle for it, and I can deal with this for the rest of my life. Like, how sad. I actually thought I could win. Even though that's not winning at all, I just thought I could outlast the battle. But nonetheless, it all still wore me down. I mean, after all, I'm still that little girl who wants nothing but love and to give all of my love to someone. And deep down inside, this was all just really sad. And the more I didn't react, the more he tried to get me to react. And although I can be stoic to the point of marble statue, he finally broke me. My spirit was broken. I could no longer really feel anything, not sadness, not happiness, just numb. And it didn't take more than six weeks once we arrived in Florida that I was at my breaking point. But remember, I have no car, I have no job, I have barely no savings left. And you know what? None of that even mattered anymore. There was no more fear around any of that. All I knew was that I needed to go. And I said, I would rather go live under a bridge with my little teddy bear cat than stay in this. And I remember saying to him with very little emotion, since I'd really just had nothing left, I said, no beautiful kitchen, four bedroom house, cars in the garage. None of this means anything to me. My spirit is broken and you won. And with that, the universe heard me say the truth for the very first time. I actually was doing something that resembled love for myself and at no cost, no more cost would I be taking any more shit from anyone. My newfound value and self-worth was reverberating throughout all the galaxies. And if I can tell you, the universe served me up everything I needed right then and there. I found a car for sale on Facebook Marketplace the very next day, listed for $6,500. But all I had was the 4,500 that you all helped me get way back in 2018 with that GoFundMe.
and the guy sold it to me for 4,500 bucks. Laura, my angel at the Wild Rabbit Bistro, was thrilled to give me a job. The only apartment that didn't have a two-month waiting list got me in the very same weekend. And with my little teddy bear in tow, we moved with nothing but a mattress and a KitchenAid mixer. I have never in my life had so little and never have I felt so happy in my life. And you know what? Every day I woke up and I wrote in my gratitude journal that Laura gave me a sentence about what I was grateful for. And believe it or not, many times it was for Doodoo Head. He was so necessary in my experience and my journey towards this emerging. Overcoming a lifetime of codependency, low self-esteem, no value, and for this, I will forever be thankful to him. He played his part so perfectly and without ever stopping nearly broke me until I finally saw the light, the light of my own existence that is actually perfect and pure love, just as we are all perfect and pure love. And it might take a lifetime of chipping away and going through unspeakable challenges to get us to emerge, but the opportunity is there for all of us. Gratitude and responsibility for always being right where we are supposed to be, even when it feels really bad. I know for me, I want and have always wanted to be in alignment with love and light. And although the darkness is always lurking, trying to lure us back in with old habits that surely die hard, and human nature is very interesting to say the least. The work to be the best I can be is constant and I'm not always great at it, but the rewards are great. And with that, I'm going to end it here. For the next one, it is now January of 2021 and my life, the life I've always wanted is starting to take shape. The best is yet to come and even though I have literally nothing, I've never been happier. So just wait until you see how all of this unfolds by 2021 and eventually I will get to the interesting story of my current situation and what I've learned as a vegan with backyard chickens. Spoiler alert, I wouldn't recommend. And no, I don't eat eggs, more about that to come. But for now, thanks for listening and in the words of one of my favorite YouTubers, I'm going to end this by saying, only spirituality will save this world. Everyone have a blessed day and be grateful.